Hi, today we're going to be upgrading the memory storage on the Lynx 14 inch Ultra Slim Notebook. Uh, it's been suggested that you could probably do a couple of mods to the bay where the SSD card will sit, but uh, I'm not so sure. Let's check it out. For this upgrade I'm going to remove the base so I can check out the room allowed for fitting the M2 SSD. I have the links face down on a sheet of thick felt to prevent scratches. The base screws are all the same torque head size, however the screw for the M2 cover plate is slightly longer so keep separate. I have a magnet on the CR-VT6 torque bit to keep the small screws in place. With all the screws removed the base just lifts off. As you can see there is no chance of fitting a 2280 M2 SSD or a smaller 2260 because the 2280 is too long. It looks like Lynx had plans to fit a 2242 and a 2260 SSD bay if required. but. There is a problem with the headroom for the 2260. Notice how the motherboard has rubbed the shell. Even if it was possible to create clearance, there is no way to fasten the base plate, as the 2260 SSD drive would cover the screw hole. I needed to transfer 180 gigabytes of files from my old laptop to the Lynx 14. I decided to go for the Transend SATA 3 6 gigabits per second M2 SSD MTS 400 with around about 256 gigabytes of space. It's quick and has a power saving mode built in. Also, it's a name I've heard of. The only downside is the 20% price hike for the 2242 size. Pick up the drive, avoid touching the contact pins, present to the socket at a slight angle and push gently home. If you have it mounted correctly there will be a slight spring to the fitting as shown. Press down gently and refit the cover plate and screw. It should feel nice and flat. That's the drive fitted. Time for a boot up to check the BIOS can see the M2 SSD. Sometimes the drives can be partitioned and formatted before you buy. If so, it will be seen by Windows under Devices and Drives. It's not showing here so I'll make sure the BIOS has picked it up. Ok, so we're going into Control Panel and opening up Device Manager. Open disk drives and there is my M2 SSD. <laughs> Clicking on the drive shows 
this device is working properly. Result. Thank you. Thank you for that. Time to initialize the drive. Right, head back into control panel and open up administrative tools. Click to open computer management. Down the left hand side, click to open disk management. you will get the initialized disk pop-up box. Check that the unknown disk zero is selected. Then select GPT for partition table and click OK. Disk zero has changed from unknown, not initialized to basic, unallocated. Right click in the unallocated area from the pop-up menu, select New Simple Volume. Click Next. I'm going for just one full volume. Click Next. Windows chooses the next logical drive letter. Click Next, and then if you wish, you can label the volume. This unallocated drive will change when formatted. Leave the settings at default, then click Next. And we have the final box. This is showing all the chosen settings. Now click finish. Wait a second for the settings to be applied. There you go, ready for use. Now a quick look back in File Explorer at devices and drives. And there it is. Okay, so the results are showing that we are just under twice as fast as the EMC that is built into the links in the read test, and we're about three and a half times quicker than the EMMC in the write test. Good result. Okay, my final words. To mod the storage bay is not worth the effort just to save a bit of cash. It's so easy to add the M.2 SSD it does the job just fine and it's very quick in the read and write test. As I wanted to store my data from my old laptop, I required an M.2 that was as reliable as possible. Hoping a named product would be safer than an unknown brand. I now have 237GB of very fast storage installed. I lost about 90GB in overheads. Hope this tutorial was useful for you and thanks for watching.